Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell, and we have finally reached the end of Chapter 12. Today, we're looking at Section 12.8, which is exponential and logarithmic equations and problem solving. All right, so we're going to use a few different properties in this chapter to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Uh, the first one is the logarithmic property of equality. Uh, this also uses the fact that logarithmic functions are one-to-one. -one. So if A, B, and C are real numbers, such that log base B of A and log base B of C are real numbers, in other words, they're defined, uh, and B does not equal one, then log base B of A equals log base B of C is equivalent to A equals C. And you'll see how we use that property in a little bit, it just occurred to me that that slide is not exactly in the right place. All right, so uh, when we go to use that property, I will let you know. Uh, in the meantime, we have this exponential equation, five to the three X equals 5.6. We're going to give an exact solution and a four decimal place approximation. So let me switch over to my tablet. All right, here we go. Five to the three X equals 5.6. So uh, when you have an exponential equation like this, the first thing you can try to do is write it in the form. In this case, it would be five to one power equals five to another power, uh, like we did a few sections ago. The problem is I have no idea how to write 5.6 as a power of five. So what you can do in that case uh, is use either common log or natural log. Technically, you can use any logarithm you want, uh, but we are generally going to use either common log or natural log because those are the ones we have on the calculator. Uh, I will use common log, and I'm going to take a common log of both sides. So log of this side equals log of that side. Maybe technically I am using the property that we were just talking about. I never really thought about it that way before. Okay, so we're taking the log of five to the three X and log of 5.6. All right, so the reason we do this is because my variable is up there in the exponent and I wanna get that variable down and by applying the logarithm to that exponential expression, I can use my favorite property of logarithms, take this exponent and go. And now my equation is going to say 3x times log 5 equals log 5.6. Now, believe it or not, this is a little baby linear equation. All right, I know it doesn't look like one. Uh, but this equation really does have the form just ax equals b. It's a number times x equals another number. And what that number is that's being multiplied by x is 3 log 5. Remember, log 5 is just a number. If you put it in the calculator, it'll give you some decimal. All right, so... These threes are going to cancel and the log fives are going to cancel. And that is going to leave me with my exact solution, <clears throat> which is log 5.6 over three times log five. And again, that is the exact solution. All right, so for the approximate solution, of course, I have to go to the calculator. So let me show you what I'm doing with my calculator. Okay, so here's the stuff we talked about in the last section. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so you wanna be careful how you put in uh, this expression. So first we're going to have log 5.6, and then we're dividing by three log five. 
So uh, you want to be careful there because the three log five is going to have to go in parentheses. If you don't put three log five in parentheses, what it's going to do is divide by three and then multiply by log five. All right, because that's how the order of operations work. And you will know that you are doing it correctly when you get this answer. They wanted us to round it to four decimal places. So that would be 0 0.3568. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about this problem, I used common log. I could have used natural log or technically any log I wanted. Um, definitely, though, want to use one of the two that's on your calculator. Uh, the only time anybody's going to care which one you use, well, I guess there could be two situations, but the one I was thinking of is uh, in your online homework. Uh, when you give the exact solution, the computer is going to be expecting it with a certain type of logarithm, and they will tell you that in the instructions. Okay. Uh, the only other situation I can think of is if you're taking a multiple choice test, uh, the choices are probably all going to be written in terms of either common log or natural log. So just a couple situations you might want to be aware of. All right. So going back to the presentation. Let's look at this example. Six to the power x plus three equals two. And we'll assume it's the same instructions, a, uh, an exact solution, and also a four decimal place approximation. Okay, so now let's go back to the tablet. And we have six to the power x plus three equals two. So this time, just for variety, I will use natural log. Okay, but hopefully you understand it doesn't matter. All right, so we have natural log six to the x plus three equals natural log two. Why am I taking log of both sides? Because the exponent, uh, the, the variable is in the exponent. And I want to take that exponent and go. So that is going to give me, now watch how I write this, x plus 3 in parentheses times natural log 6 equals natural log 2. All right, and we want to solve that thing for x. So there are uh, two different ways you could do this. You could distribute natural log six. Remember natural log six is just a number uh, and then work it like you would any other linear equation. I think it would be simpler to uh, at this point divide both sides by natural log six. So that is going to give me x plus 3 equals natural log 2 over natural log 6. And now I'll just subtract 3 from both sides. If you do it the other way, you will get your answer in a slightly different form. Uh, but it'll be equivalent. So natural log 2 over natural log 6. Subtract 3. That would be my exact solution. And once again, we will go to the calculator for the approximate solution. <clears throat> okay, let's see. All right, so natural log two, let's make sure we close that parenthesis and then divide by natural log six. And then we will subtract three. The calculator understands order of operation, so it knows to do the division before the subtraction. All right, so to uh, four decimal places, my solution is negative 2.6131. All right, moving right along. Okay, so now we get into our logarithmic equations. By using the definition of logarithms in terms of exponents and properties of logarithms, we can solve logarithmic equations. 
very important note. We've uh, run into this a couple times before. Logarithmic equations must be checked to make sure negative numbers do not appear in logarithms because the log of a negative number is undefined. So put logarithmic equations into the category with rational equations and radical equations. Uh, the solution has to be checked, at least in this case, it's not as bad as a radical equation. You don't have to literally plug the number in and make sure that the left side equals the right side. All we're looking for is just to make sure that no possible solutions uh, give you something in the original equation that's log of a negative number. All right, so if we ever see log of a negative number, when we go to check our possible solution, we know that's not a solution. Okay, so this one is all done out in the uh, presentation. I don't have to go to the tablet. The equation is log base four of eight X minus six equals three. So what we're gonna do with this is write it in exponential form, which would say four to the third power equals eight X minus six. All right, so hopefully that equation looks nicer to you. That's just a linear equation. 4 to the third power is 64. So now we'll add 6 to both sides. That'll give you 70 equals 8x. Divide both sides by 8. That gives you x equals 70 over 8. Simplifying the fraction, you get 35 over 4. So don't forget, we want to make sure that that's not going to uh, put a negative number inside my logarithm. So let's put in the 70 over 8. That would actually be a little easier. So I'm looking up here, eight times 70 over eight is 70, and then 70 minus six is 64. Since 64 is a positive number, I know that that logarithm is defined, and really that's the only thing that can go wrong, okay? So that, that does check out. All right, next example, which I will have to do on the tablet, is log base three of x plus log base three of x minus eight equals two. All right, so going over to the tablet. Uh, whenever you have an equation that comes in this form where there's one, more than one logarithm on the same side, you're going to use one of your properties of logarithms, either the product property or the quotient property to combine that into a single logarithm. So in this case, we're going to use the product property All right, to write this logarithm as log base three of x times x minus eight. Remember, that's how the product property works. And that equals two. So now it's kind of similar to the last example. We're just going to write this in exponential form. The base is three. I haven't asked you this in a while. What is a logarithm? An exponent. A logarithm is an exponent. And this logarithm is two. So the exponent is two. And that equals x times x minus eight. Okay, so this looks to me like a quadratic equation, right? Three squared equals nine. And if I distribute this x, I get x squared minus eight x. That is definitely a quadratic equation. So I'm gonna write that in standard form. Subtract nine from both sides. That gives me x squared minus 8x minus 9 equals 0. And now I think I can solve this by factoring, right? And we're going right back to the beginning of the semester. What are the numbers that uh, add up to negative 8 and multiply to negative 9? Would be negative 9 and positive 1. All right, so we have x minus nine times x plus one equals zero. And of course that means, uh -oh, x minus nine equals zero. 
four x plus one equals zero, which would mean that x is nine or x is negative one. Now remember, these are just possible solutions. We have to go back to the original equation and make sure that none of them are going to create uh, negative numbers inside my logarithm. So starting with x equals nine, that would give us log base three of nine and log base three of nine minus eight, which is one. So that's okay. But I think negative one is gonna be a problem <coughs> In the very first uh, term, that gives me log base three of negative one. That's no good, we have to throw that out. So the only solution is nine. All right, so in the next example, we're solving log base four of 10 minus log base four of x equals two. So this one is kind of similar to the last example. We have uh, multiple log terms on one side. So we need to use one of our properties to combine those. And since I see a minus in between, this time it's gonna be the quotient property. Uh-oh, spoiler, darn it. <laughs> okay. okay, better fix my animations there. So log base four of 10, minus log base four of x equals two. Using the quotient property, uh, the left-hand side becomes log base four of 10 over x equals two. And then when we rewrite that in exponential form, we get four to the second power equals 10 over x, uh, which is a rational equation. And the solution comes out to 10 sixteenths which simplifies to five eighths. You might wanna take a minute and just uh, check how do you get from here to here. Uh, and then don't forget, we have to make sure that that's not gonna create any negative numbers inside a logarithm. Well, the only place that could happen <clears throat> is in this second term. Uh, but if I replace X with five eighths, that gives me log base four of five eighths which is a defined real number. So that's the only thing uh, that I'm worried about. All right, so now let's look at our applications. There are several examples of application problems in the textbook exercises and examples that use exponential and logarithmic equations. After substituting given values into the equations, you should be able to solve for the remaining variable by using properties of logarithms. All right, so uh, the first example, a population size Y of a community of lemmings varies according to the relationship Y equals Y sub zero times E to the power 0.15 T. In this formula, T is the time in months and Y sub zero is the initial population at time zero. Estimate the population after eight months if there were originally 2,000 lemmings. And I think this example probably could have gone uh, back in section 12.3, but let's have a look. So we have y equals y sub zero times e to the 0.15t. Uh, y sub zero is 2,000 and t is eight. All right, so that gives you 2000 times e to the power 1.2. And when you crunch those numbers in the calculator, you should get 6640.2339. Uh, and so since we're talking about a population here, that has to be a whole number. We would round that to approximately 6640 lemmings. All right, next example, and this truly is a 12.8 example. How long does it take an investment of $5,000 to double if it's invested at 4% compounded quarterly? So remember our formula uh, from the last section, and I think we had seen it once before that. 
uh, a equals p times one plus r over n to the power nt. So here we have p equals 5,000, r equals 0 0.04, and n equals four. And what's different about this problem from what we did in the last section, uh, in the last section, they gave us p, r, n, and t, and we had to find a. This time they're giving us p, r, n, and a, and we have to find t. All right, so what's that gonna look like? Uh, it's gonna give us 10,000 equals 5,000 times one plus 0 0.04 over four to the power four t. And we have to solve that equation for t. So the first thing we'll do is uh, evaluate that expression inside the parentheses. That gives us 1.01. Then we'll divide both sides by 5,000. That's how they got the two. So we have two equals 1.01 to the power 4t. This, remind, this equation remi reminds me a lot of the first example. All right, so taking common log on both sides, we have log two equals log 1.01 to the 4t. So now, you know, I can't resist doing this. We're gonna take this exponent and go so that is gonna give us log two equals 4t times log 1.01. So dividing both sides by four times log 1.01, we get t equals log two divided by four times log 1.01. And according to the calculator, that's about 17.415. So it would take more than 17 years for this money to double in value. Specifically, I think you'd have to wait until, uh, well, you'd have to do 17 full years. Uh, and then remember it's compounded every quarter. So one quarter would be 17.25. You're not quite there yet. You'd technically have to wait until the end of the second quarter. Uh, so the best answer I could give you would be 17.5, but your online homework will tell you uh, exactly how they want you to round that. And that's gonna do it for section 12.8. That's gonna do it for chapter 12. So we'll see you next time.